Hello, everybody. Welcome Hi. to day one of the long-awaited Myths and Mimosas event. <laughs> uh, so I hope you're all doing well. I know that we have a lot of different time zones on here. So for me, for us, it's 11. Um, but for you, it might be earlier. <laughs> yeah. And for today's Myths and Mimosas, um, <laughs> I have coffee. <laughs> As you saw from last video, I was at um, I was at Solo Ensemble with my students all day yesterday, and I'm going to teach a bunch more lessons today. So we are energizing today, but feel free to have your drink of choice. Um, you're probably, if you're in a different time zone, it might be, um, you know, wine mimosa time there. <laughs> Actually, yeah, that would be ideal if you're watching this at 7 p.m. and you're just ready to wind down and have a little glass of wine and stuff. That's perfect. So, okay, well, things might get a little spicy today. <laughs> <laughs> we are talking about myths that we hear all the time when people are just trying to get better practicing, get better at their instrument, you know, work really hard. And it's worth talking about all these things because some of them sometimes end up wasting a lot of your time and we don't want that we are all about making things efficient and fun and non-judgmental over here so Anna oh gosh here we go <laughs> okay so, here's the first thing um oh wait I lost my train of thought entirely that's okay, okay. and oh <laughs> I'm going to say why we're making this video series. Okay, so we get so many emails and questions from students about practicing, and we see so many strange things, <laughs> whether it be from mistakes students are making, who we love, or YouTube. And it was so important, and we see these so much that we wanted to make a series about it. Um, mm -hmm. So that's why we're doing this. Okay. What is myth oh. number one? Mm. I'm ready. Myth number one is I invested a lot of money into taking a couple lessons with a really, really famous local person. Oh, Therefore, I feel very spicy I, about this. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So first of all, um, I think it's really important that when you're learning an instrument, you know, you try to seek out help and advice and some resources. Um, but something that me and Amanda see is that, um, we have people that are like, oh, well, I've taken a couple lessons from so-and-so, principal, flute, or whatever of the whatever. So I'm good. <laughs> That's it. I got my lessons. They're really famous. They know what they're doing. Um, no. <laughs> uh, okay. So while taking lessons is awesome, um, it's really important that you are getting the tools that you need and the resources to be able to practice on your own and be able to succeed um and just because someone is famous or because you know they have a bunch of youtube videos doesn't mean that they're necessarily the best teacher um i'm sure you have some more thoughts on that too amanda yeah absolutely um so you're looking at somebody who has taken lessons with more people than i can count yeah <laughs> and what i've learned from all that is spending one hour with someone is not long enough for them to get to know you and actually give you advice that is pertinent to you. I mean, it depends on their approach. Like our approach, we tend to be really descriptive. Like for example, if you come to me and you're like, my wrist hurts, what's the issue? Or my high notes are cracking, what's the issue? You know, somebody who is maybe a less experienced teacher could just say like, your notes are cracking because you need a new flute or something. Um, but, you know, obviously our program is three months long and now we're extending it to a year. So we have a lot of time to sort of work with you to figure out why your own high notes are cracking. But then at the same time, we give you a lot of different ideas for why that could be, because depending on your needs, it is going to be different. So your high notes might be cracking because your embouchure is too tight, because your posture is kind of slouched over, because you're not blowing your air in the right direction because there's something messed up about your read um, because it's too humid or too dry because you know there could be a myriad of reasons and just because so and so is making a ton of money and getting a ton of fame sitting first chair in some famous orchestra <laughs> that doesn't necessarily mean they're going to 
tell you why your high notes are cracking and be correct. There have been, oh my God, Anna, did I tell you <laughs> that I took, <laughs> well, while I was at Oberlin, I took a lesson with a famous person and she told me, I'm not going to say who it was, but she told me that right. I had a problem with this finger and it just never went down because this on the flute, like this finger's all bent and bent and stuff. Okay. So she was like, this finger moves too slowly. Okay. You're not going to have a chance at getting into any orchestras if you don't fix that. I think you need an extension. So do you know what happened? Did okay, you yeah, buy the extension? <laughs> not only did I buy the extension, but it messed up my entire balance of my flute. <gasps> and then I couldn't play anything. So then I had to... I had to make another extension to help balance it out. And then a year later, like I, I saw another teacher and she was like, what are you doing? I think you, I think you have more problems with your fingers. So I bought four more extensions. <laughs> I had six extensions on my flu. It was so heavy. It didn't even look like a flu. And I was having a lot of hand problems. I was like, the more extensions I add, the more problems I'm having. I yeah, it's getting heavier, it. right? Like, <laughs> Yeah, but literally, I'm not even kidding you. Like, uh, two years of my flute playing life, like, during, like, a vital time in college, like, sort of got wasted for me because I was just, like, not really able to play much. And I kept messing with my hand position because some famous person told me that I needed to make a change. So, anyway, there's your myth busted for today. You don't necessarily have to pay a lot of money to study with some famous person for one hour, for two hours, for even five hours, and then just take what they say and be like, this is, you know, what I should do <clears throat> exactly. Like they know best. Like they don't know best. Right. A teacher who, yeah, a teacher who meets you where you are and gives you solutions and tries things with you and explains things to you and checks in with you to make sure that you're understanding things and checks in with how you're feeling. Like that's who you want to listen to. Yeah. And I, I mean, you know yourself best. Like you, you have the agency to be able to pick someone that you're comfortable with. Um, and the other thing too about that is like, I mean, lessons are amazing to get that, um, you know, one-on-one -on -one support, but the reason why we kind of developed our program is because there's obviously questions that come up after the lesson, like, you know, um, and a lot of questions are other questions that the same people are having about like breathing or tone or practicing like how do you practice and some of those things can't like they just don't fit into the lesson time so that's literally why we started making videos and doing these live sessions and we're like oh it seems like this is something that people really need um so that's kind yeah. of why we created virtual woodwood academy um and it's awesome like we have such a cool community and a lot of people actually had the same problem and were able to talk about it with each other which was cool um because then you don't feel so alone so anyway that was one of the spicy myths <laughs> for today um feel free to if you're watching this feel free to comment like if you have any oh do we have two comments Ooh, i'm trying to find them um <laughs> You know, if you have any thoughts, what instrument, uh, what time zone you're coming in from. Um, cool. Yeah. And also another thing, <clears throat> here's another myth for you. Mm. Um, okay. So some people feel that the fastest and best way to get better at your instrument is by taking private lessons. Mm. And private lessons are great. Like, they are Oops. awesome. If you have a... Sorry. Oh, <laughs> Making sure the Facebook video is working. Um, coming in from. Okay, we're good. We're good. Okay, good. So I just want to say, like, some people will take private lessons only and be like, I don't need a program like this because I'm getting all I need from private lessons. And I mean, even if you have like the best teacher for you that could possibly exist, and even if you're learning a lot, and even if you have grown a lot and really love and trust the person, like there's strength in numbers. That's the beautiful thing about this is a lot of my private students have come through the program and learned a ton because you learn a lot from other people. Like, let's say that, you know, I'm your private teacher and we work on like your embouchure for a lot of your lessons. And then you go to one of our master classes and watch us work with another flute player 
on their embouchure. And then all of a sudden, everything clicks because you saw it from another perspective, because you saw somebody else who had the same problem, didn't, you know, you didn't feel so alone about it. And that is really powerful. And honestly, in my opinion, like it's way more efficient and cost effective for you to just learn from other people as well. Amanda. Oh, sorry. No, this is, I was just thinking, like, that's kind of like, when you think of a music school or a music program, that's like kind of what it is, <laughs> right? Like, you just don't go and take lessons. Um, that's true. Except we're yeah. just not as, you know, we're, we're not a scary competitive music program. We're like a donut love <laughs> hug. <laughs> <laughs> yeah like when you know when we don't have any more things to talk about we'll definitely love to do a pet show and tell like that is how our calls generally go it's like when we're done we're just going to do fun things so yeah but that is how a music school goes like when we when we went to music conservatory like the least amount of time we spent on anything was private lessons like we had one private lesson a week but then we also had one studio class a week where we got to watch other people be taught. We had orchestral excerpts class. We had music theory. We had oral skills. Four theory. years we had of that. History. We had four <laughs> years of that, yes. I mean, I think I've taken probably, because I'm doing my DM now, I've been taking like seven years. No, wait, I can't do math. I don't know. It's over, <laughs> it's over seven years of like music theory and stuff and that's literally why it's in programs like you know um so that's why we teach that stuff and it's stuff that can't be covered in lessons i mean we could spend a whole lesson going over music theory but then <laughs> you know or we could just make a video um telling you about it okay yeah i mean and think about it from a cost effective standpoint like i mean okay let's say that you had a lot of questions about like switching key signatures or something. We've got several videos of that in our music theory unit. So you could spend two private lessons, you know, paying for private lessons, going over those things. But instead at Woodman Academy, you can literally watch all the videos. You could chat about it with us outside of the call. Like if you have a question, just send us an email or post in our private Facebook group. Like, hey, I'm confused. We help you. Um, it's faster. You could do it on your own time. Like after the lesson's over, if you still are confused about switching from B flat major to E flat major, even though we just talked about it for a whole hour, you can reach out and talk to us again. Like that's the beautiful thing. Um. Anyway, yeah, yeah. I got real spicy. Today. You can send us a Sorry. video of you singing your major scale in your car. We've received some. Of <laughs> we have we actually have received that. I don't think they were driving. <laughs> but yes <laughs> yeah it's it's great um yeah um okay well i got we got very spicy about that um okay i have another music myth to bust okay here's the thing that i hear a lot um okay i'm trying to figure out how to best phrase this question um, I'm just not getting better because I'm not spending a lot of time practicing. I only have 10 or 20 minutes and that's just not enough time to improve. Like, I just need to wait until I have more time. Like, I can't get better with the practice time I have. So the myth of needing like four, three, four hours to practice. What do you think about that, Amanda? <laughs> um, well, I busting that myth. Busted. I, I feel like we need a sign. <laughs> myth bust. We can use my llama. Myth busted. That's beautiful. Um, okay. So can I keep it in frame? Oh, I can't put it in frame. I don't know what to do. But anyway. Screenshot yeah, really that, don't... guys. Screenshot the llama. Hang it up on it's... your practice wall for motivation. I keep um, Reese's peanut butter cups inside. <laughs> it's supposed to be a plant, but I feel like candy's better. <laughs> it's not. I mean, they're both good. But anyway, back to the subject at hand. Um, if you are feeling like, because we get this all the time, like I have a full-time job. How am I supposed to fit in all my practicing? Okay. We all have full-time jobs. Like, I mean, 
that is why we made this program for adults. Because like when you try and find a program and the, the teacher teaches like middle schoolers, high schoolers, college students, blah, blah, blah. Like you guys have totally different schedules than them. So that's why like the information we deliver to you at Women Academy is super efficient and succinct and gives you what you need and helps you understand things quickly. Um, so that like, and we also talk about your practice session and we'll sit down with you and strategize. I had a question about this in the email the other day, like about this exactly, Anna. But like, mm. we'll strategize with you how to fit in what you need in those 20 minutes. Because just saying, I'm going to wait until I have more time. I'm going to wait until I retire. I'm going to wait until like my kids grow up. Like all that does, it's, it's ultimately just an excuse that's getting in the way of something cool that you want to do. So if you only have 10 to 20 minutes to practice each day, you, that's plenty of time. <laughs> like we got. Oh yeah. You can totally improve. And I, um, and, and for each person's personal. So we, we've developed, like, we even had like a little assignment where we were creating personal practice plans with everyone. Um, yeah. cause everyone's schedule is different. And, um, <clears throat> Well, other thing too about practicing is you can waste so much time by practicing wrong. Like you can, if you spend two hours practicing, but are practicing, you don't know what you're doing. You're practicing things the wrong way. That can actually be more detrimental than a really efficient 10 minutes of practice. Um, Cause what you're doing when you're practicing is you're learning habits, right? So these habits are then translating. So if you're practicing things wrong, or you're learning wrong habits. Those are the things that are, uh, you're learning. And then you have to learn how to untrain those habits. <laughs> and then you have to pay a private teacher to help you break all those habits. And sometimes they take a while. So is it something like it takes like 21 days to build a habit or do something 21 times to build a habit? But yeah, if you, if you wait to join a program until you've put in like a few months of better practicing and during those few months, you, you don't practice things correctly, like you do things wrong, even things that you wouldn't even think are wrong, like small things, because playing an instrument is so like personal, you could be doing things wrong without realizing it. I have a perfect example that actually relates to you in a good, in a good oh, well. way. It's a good one. Okay. <laughs> okay, so I came to Amanda to take, um, flute lessons actually like she actually was like this was like forever ago so she like had an ad on Facebook or something and I was like oh my gosh like I need a lesson so I reached out and she was like yes <laughs> um and like I came to my lesson and I had been trying to learn flute by myself for a while um and just kind of like as a jazz as a clarinet and saxophone player playing flute like, you know, I was, like, watching some videos and just, like, trying and, like, within, like, I took, I think I took a couple lessons with Amanda. Um, and, like, Amanda just, like, gave me some basics and, like, I was, like, instantly, like, improving more than I had over, like, the past two years of me playing flute. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> like, <laughs> Amanda's amazing. Um... So we like fixed my embouchure. We fixed, I don't know. We did a whole lot of stuff. <laughs> it was weird. Embouchure, posture, articulation, like those things. I mean, if you're a doubler watching YouTube videos or just you picked up flute and you're watching YouTube videos, like. It doesn't work. It, no. It doesn't. It really doesn't. And we did this the all. YouTube video can't see what you're doing. <laughs> no. Or you could have a mirror in your face, but then no. And I mean, we did this all online. Like we've never, I don't think we've ever done an in-person, have we? Maybe we should, but we've never done an in-person flute lesson. I don't think we would get anything done if we tried. No, <laughs> I don't think so either. So <laughs> I would just become a donut excursion. No, and I've totally improved my flute playing over, I mean, you know, this was several years ago, but now I'm, I'm actually teaching flute lessons um, and doubling and I'm able to take doubling gigs now where I'm playing flute. Um, and I'm like able to play pieces and be like, yeah, that sounds cool, <laughs> you know, um, and it's great. I feel amazing. And I'm still, um, you know, I can't practice because I play three instruments. I, I think that, um, so when we were in music school, Amanda, we were practicing a lot, 
But now, like, even though we're out of music school and we are professional musicians, we don't have three hour, three to four hours every day to practice. That's just not, that's not possible. We're both doing a lot of different things. So I have like, I have this like 10 to 20 minute daily flute routine and it's working, you know? Um, and when I go into the practice room. You started from a beginner with flute too, and you're only doing 10 to 20 minutes per day and yeah. improving a yeah. yeah, and I had, you know, I did have other music knowledge, but in terms of, like, the flute as an instrument, I was a total, pretty much a total beginner. Yep. Um, yeah, so even in college, so I'm also, because we did practice a lot in college, um, but I have to say that a lot of the time I spent practicing, I didn't necessarily need to do that. Like, I think half the time I was, like, practicing like really hard chamber music pieces that like my friends wanted to play or that were like required for my degree. But like, as far as like the beautiful thing about our program is that we ask you, what do you want? What do you want to be good at? What do you want to get better at? Like what pieces do you want to play? And that's how we craft your practicing. Like if you just want to like move up a chair in your band and like start playing all those runs and you're like Sousa marches and not have any problems with them, we're going to cater that pract- practicing to you. And no, it's gonna, not going to take three to four hours. Like we'll get it done in 20 minutes, but just depending on what your goals are, your practicing looks different. Exactly. Because, and being a jazz um, doubler for me, I am doing more specific jazz doubling related things in my practice that you probably aren't doing as much of because <laughs> you don't have to play in a big band um, but yeah um so those are just some things um yeah and i you know we were just so tired of seeing like you know these students and people like wasting time we don't want you wasting time practicing um you know we want you to be able to do stuff and live life and feel good about your instrument um yeah okay well we could definitely talk all day about these spicy myths um <laughs> actually but okay. we we're wanted, be, huh uh, we're gonna be back tomorrow with more <laughs> yeah and, um should we announce this tomorrow our other giveaway or we could we should announce it now maybe okay so if you've sure. made it to the end of this video congrats because you are finding out about another giveaway we're doing. So um, in our Facebook group, we're doing a two $10 Starbucks card giveaway to the people who invite the, two people who invite the most people into our Facebook group, Woodwind Support Community. We'll be announcing that this Tuesday, the first? 20. 28th, okay. February is <laughs> It's all in the Facebook group. And then we are also going to be doing another uh, $10 Starbucks card for the person who comments, likes the most, so the person who interacts the most with their videos. You, my special friend, will be also getting a Starbucks card. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, so we're going to be back tomorrow with some different myths. Um, <coughs> I think tomorrow we're going to be talking a lot about, um, we're definitely going to talk about how people, how music theory can really actually be amazing for your playing. Um, but if you have any myths that you want to bust or just anything that you're not sure about that you've heard, see it on YouTube, send us an email, um, put it in the comments and we'd love to talk about it, but we'll be back live here tomorrow at 10 AM EST. See you then. Bye.